guys welcome back I'm gonna do a ring pour today haven't done one for oh, quite a while and uh, later on this week I'm gonna do a long ring pour with like either five or seven different rings on it um, I'll show you how to do that one kind of looks like timber but today I'm gonna do pinks and gold now this is a 40 centimeter square, 40 by 40 centimeter canvas or 16 inch by 16 inch. And I'm using my thicker mix today. It's a bit grubby, 70% glue, 30% water. So for my flip cups, I do 60, 40. The ring paws, I like them to be thicker so that the rings keep their shape. So I do 70, 30 and I'm using global paints today. I've got the pale pink there is called Rose and this one's a mid pink horizon and then I've got this dark pink which is the magenta and over here the really dark one I need that for contrast is plum and then I've got the metallic gold as well so no white no black just pinks and gold and I'm gonna see how that goes and I'm gonna I'm gonna use this so I can get a wider like sheet coming out rather than just a little point and I'm going to see if I can like make it into like a ribbon like a 3d effect so anyway that's I'm gonna have a go at that see how I go um, so this is the order I'm doing it dark light well that's a pink and then with the lighter than that one that's a darker one and then we'll go back to the lighter one and then back to the darker one so I'm not sure how many layers I'm going to do maybe three um, you can see it's really quite quite a big mound there. All right, let's get this started. My gold, um, you know how gold has to be thickened. The gold, I did two parts gold to one part pouring medium. And the others are just one to one, one part pouring medium to one part paint. And I've got the two golds because obviously I've got lots of pinks and I thought, well, I can't just do one gold and have one, two, three, four pinks. You know, the gold will just get lost. So I did two golds. Hopefully it'll be enough to shine through. And hopefully I've made it thick enough that it won't vanish. This pink. It's much thinner. I've added more, the um, Horizon paint. Yeah, I, I had to probably mix it almost two to one actually. It was really quite thin, quite a thin paint. Now I have made up more paint than what I need. I, was only, I wasn't gonna add that one, so I made these up and then I thought mm, I need something darker, you know, for a contrast, so then I added that. So now I've got too much paint. That's all right, um, I might add some to the, the corners. Because if I'm getting a nice ring shape and I don't want to go over the corners, I may put uh, some paint, some pink on my corners. May do that. Because I've got plenty left. Or I can do a little baby ring pour. Alright, so that's all the paint. Move these out of the way. Okay. How many layers was that? One, two, three, four layers by the looks of it. Now with the ring paws, if you want nice circular rings, you need to pour from like quite low down. If it comes up too high, when you're pouring it kind of wobbles like that and you get like a little bit of a, a jiggly ring. So make sure you get nice and close. It's a bit hard when your cup's really full, but as I get closer, um, well, as the cup empties, I'll be able to get a little bit closer. So let's see how we go, hey? And I'm going to see if I can get that sort of to fold over itself kind of thing. Okay, so now that I'm getting closer, I can actually do the little ribbony thing that I'm wanting to do, which I couldn't do before. So it was a little bit high up. I'm 
we'll see how it goes. It looks as if it's all blended, really. <laughs> Let's get a little bit more of that dark purple plummy colour out of the bottom. And then catch the drip. Okay. Now, if by chance you do sort of miss miss up your court your middle a little bit you can just do a little circle with a bamboo skewer just to make that last little tail a circle um, i think i might put a little bit of this just on the corners hopefully my colors are thick enough So that we can see the definition of the rings if your paints are too thin they're just all blur and you don't see the definition of your ring so you do need to make it your mix thicker if you're doing a ring pour much thicker than you would for a, a flip cup or a, a swipe the swipes the thinnest um, then your flip cup and your ring pours are the thickest so you can't just sort of use the same recipe for every technique. They're all different depending on what technique you're doing. Let's torch this to pop some bubbles. I just made up a big batch of that 70-30 mix because I'd run out. See, I make it up in a big container like that and then it's ready to go and to put it in my squeeze bottles. Okay. Um, let's do a big circle first. I'm hoping I can get enough definition without having white in here, but if it doesn't really work, I might have to add a white. Now, I know the gold just kind of looks a bit yellow at the moment and might not really match all that well, but I'm hoping that when it dries, it'll be nice and sparkly. So I like to do this, go around in circles. the edges <laughs> and then you can sort of decide where you want to go hmm I don't really know about those colors not really doing it for me I'm afraid okay let's go over this corner here first looks like I'm gonna go over the corners because I've got plenty of paint Back to the middle and then I'll just continue over because the paint's wanting to head in that direction. Over it goes. So all those rings are opening up now. You can see the colours in between each ring. to the middle and then we'll go off to this corner here oops I don't think I was quite in the middle I'm a bit lopsided there might have had my mix a little bit too thick you know the way it's acting we'll see these are the global paints I'm just trying to use them up because I've got a lot of them We go to that last little corner there. Go, go, go. And we're over. Back to the middle. Okay. Well, my idea of having it the paint in this cup with a wide sort of sheet coming down hasn't really worked because see how wide these rings are um, yeah I don't not really happy with that I probably should have just gone back to what I would normally do um, in a jug with a spout or a paper cup that I can pinch the edge so I can get a thinner 
thinner ring, but I thought, hey, I'll, you know, I'll just try something different, see how it goes. Um, but yeah, it hasn't really worked this time round. Um, the gold, yeah, the gold just looks like yellow, doesn't it? Hopefully when it's dry, it'll look nicer. But at the moment, you just think, oh, why did she put pink and yellow together? <laughs> and, you know, I did lose it a little bit. There's some here, but pretty much lost the gold down there. Even though I did thicken it up so much, um, still, still lost it. Um, you know what? I've got some paints left. Not a lot, but some left. Let's pop them in this cardboard cup. And go again, because I've still got quite a lot left. So I'll just use the cardboard cup. So I started with the plum and then some gold. What did I do next? Can't remember. Um, don't think it was that one. She might leave that one out actually. Oh, these are a bit thick. They're looking a bit thick now. Maybe I will have to put it in. This one, it's kind of taken over the whole place. Maybe I'll just put a little bit in. Go back to the plum. Hopefully I'll have enough to do three layers. Because I did make up a lot of paint, eh? Well, that's very thick. And I think maybe they're a little bit too thick. I'm so used to working with the thinner mix. I've been doing my flip cut paws lately. Okay, last of the plum. We'll see what difference it makes, hey, whether pouring from a wide opening or a narrow opening makes much difference. Interesting little experiment, hey? Hopefully I've got enough paint. Probably haven't. But I have got a wet base coat to work on now, so maybe the paint will slide around a little bit better and I might not need so much that I had on the first time because this is not a full cup. off with that last little bit of this pink, mid pink that I've got. So this one I'm going to be more careful with my ring that I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to pinch the cup so that I can get a spout, do a thin spout and we'll see what difference it makes, eh? Alright, because the last one was quite fast. So here we go. Just do a, a smaller, oops, a bit blobby now. I have to get a little bit closer. This is how I normally do a ring pause, but I thought, oh, I'll just try that. I'm going to go the other way. There's no reason why you can't go the other way if you want to have a little bit of different colour coming up. See, that's a lot of pink there, so I'm going to change directions. so that you haven't got all the same colour on the one side. We need to get a little bit closer. See how it's kind of wobbling a little bit? It's not giving me a nice smooth ring. So I need to get closer like that. See, now I'm starting to get my smooth rings. And obviously it's taking a lot longer to pour this paint out. There 
I'm getting a lovely ring now. It's not getting wobbly. So this is how I would normally do a ring pour, but I just thought, oh, I want to see how, I, how it works with that more of a wider sheet and then try to ribbon it, but it did not work the way I was hoping. So this is just a nice little narrow spout, much thinner rings. And then try and catch your drip. Again, if you've made a little bit of a mistake, you can just go around in a circle like that. And that'll hide your center because it's small at the moment, but it will stretch. Oh, a bit off side. <laughs> Bit off center. Okay, let's give it a quick torch again. Two pours for the price of one today. They're both free. <laughs> okay, let's go around in a big circle again. The paint's gonna move really nicely because I've got a wet base coat there already. I should be able to tip off all that old paint that's on the bottom. I'm going to go off to this corner. Try not to lose all that plum on the ends because I'm liking that plum. So kind of keeping that this corner is not too bad actually this has got a little bit of the paint from the previous one I might keep that for now Let's see what it looks like and when you take a circle towards the corner and then bring it back it makes this little sort of half circle it's just what it does So again, trying to keep some of that plum on the corners. See, that's more a traditional ring pour, isn't it? I don't know what you were thinking, woman, trying to change up something that's traditional and then you try and change it. It's just not right, is it? <clears throat> Now you can sort of look at your composition and think, well, do I not like what I don't like? I don't like how this pink goes around like that. I'm going to have to lose some of it from here, from somewhere. I just don't like how it does that. So take some of it off like that. And then I think I'll take some of that off the bottom there as well. It's just a little bit too stripy for my liking. Oh, look at that. That's kind of... Got four matching corners there, eh? Hey? <laughs> Look at the mess on my puppy piddle pad. All right, so that's better. That's uh, more of a traditional ring pour. Um, comes down to colour choices, really, on, on how good, I guess, your pour is going to look. <clears throat> this, where is it? This is the culprit. He was a little bit thin, this one, even though I thickened him up. A lot he's still a little bit thin and he's kind of blended I guess if I'd had more difference in colors like more differentiation in my colors um, I might get a more stark difference but I love that plum in the middle there and then I got the plum on the corners so for me that's really pretty and then I've got a little bit of all the others this really really pale pink one it almost looks white doesn't it through the centre there. All right, I'll take you down for a close-up. Oh, let me check my corners first. And then I'll take you down. Geez, you think by doing two pours, I would have actually covered my corners, wouldn't you? Nope. Still miss them. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to get a wriggle on. I've got carpenter coming this morning and I've got someone coming to give me a quote for a retaining wall for my new driveway that we cut out down to the granny flat so he's going to be here in about 10 minutes so I need to get a wriggle on I thought yeah I'll just do a really quick pull 
wasn't expecting to do it twice. So I'll just do this, take it down for a close up, and then I better get going, hey? So what do you think of that ring pour? Pretty? Take it down. Turn my light off. So, as I said, the gold just looks yellow at the moment, but I think it'll look quite pretty once it's it's dried and it's shiny. I don't normally pour in pinks, you know me, I do blues. How pretty is that centre though, hey? Little fingerlings. Haven't got the fingerlings because, you know, I didn't do the jiggle. So I've got more of a straight point there. And the colours blend into each other. And there's that corner. So got pretty good definition. You can see the lines, the rings. They've stayed separate, and the only way to get them to stay separate like that is with a nice thick mix. So if your mix is too thin, they'll just blend together and you won't get those, those rings. So something to look out for if your mix is, you know, blurring together, you're not getting your rings like this, then it's a little bit too thin. Okay, I'm going to get going things to do, places to go, people to meet, as they say. So I will see you all for the next poll. Bye for now.